Oh, hello, I didn't see you there. Welcome back to Bitcoin Stuff with Daniel Krewitz. This episode, we're going to talk about why investors are powerful. Okay, so I think investors should be the boss of Bitcoin because investors have the best incentives. Okay, so their interests are most aligned with the success of Bitcoin because when Bitcoin goes up, investors get richer. Okay, so they're the group that needs to pay the most attention out of any group. Okay, I think that should be sufficient reason to want to listen to the investors very carefully. But uh, that's not enough for some people. So this episode is about what happens if you don't listen. And I'm going to lay it out real simple because it's evident to me that a lot of people in Bitcoin don't understand the power that you're dealing with here. Okay, so I've been having a lot of discussions lately with people about Bitcoin Cash, which I think is the third best investment ever to show up in the Bitcoin world. And so the first best is the original Bitcoin, Bitcoin before the split. Okay, so what that means now is equal units of both chains. So a diversified investment. Because that's that's what you would have if you had bought Bitcoin before and then didn't do anything with it. So that's the top investment. The second best is the core chain. Because, <laughs> well, let's face it. But Bitcoin Cash is still the third best, which makes it great. Almost everything else in Bitcoin has been terrible. So I, I like it. And other investors also like it, which we can see because it has the third position in coinmarketcap.com. And it's a coincidence that it's number three on both lists because because the lists are different. But evidently other investors are interested in it. Now, uh, lots of people I've talked to don't like Bitcoin Cash, okay? They think it's disruptive and it's causing a lot of trouble and they're unhappy about it. But the thing is, people build stuff for investors, okay? If you're an investor, it's kind of like you just want things and people build it for you because they want your money, right? So it is the, the fact that the investors want something like Bitcoin Cash is the reason that it gets built. And also, if Bitcoin Cash were number 100 on CoinMarketCap.com, it would be way less disruptive than where it is now. Because if the market cap was smaller, there's just much, much. It would have much less of an effect on the Bitcoin economy. So it's it's disruptive because investors like it. Okay, so if other people don't like something like Bitcoin Cash, they have to appease the investors. They have to keep the investors happy because they're the ones that, that these things are being built for. Okay, So that's power. That's very powerful. That's leverage. And right now, Bitcoin investors are not using this leverage nearly as much as they could. Okay, So um, in my first video, I said that the investors should think of themselves as being like Yahweh and the core devs should be like the chosen people. So now I'm going to do my impression of what I think the investors should be feeling. Okay, so imagine you're the Bitcoin God and you're overseeing the Bitcoin world and you're saying, yes, <laughs> this is good, yes, very good. Bitcoin is growing. Yes, we like that. We like, <gasps> what is this? Mm, block stream. Mm, block stream. It is too big. It is too difficult to rearrange things how we would. Mm, block stream. It is annoying. Mm, mm, mm. I want a weapon. Here it is. It's Bitcoin Cash. See, it's like 
Thor's hammer from the Marvel movies. It just appeared in my hand just because I was angry. See? So now I can do this. Bitcoin is anti-fragile, so it's good to go in and smash stuff every once in a while. You know what I'm saying? Did you guys see the Lego movie? I want the Bitcoin world to be exactly like Legoland. Okay, everything should be easily taken apart and put back together. And to me, Blockstream are like the guys from, uh, the guys trying to put glue on everything, right? You get it? If the investors are annoyed, people build really annoying things for us to use. Yeah, so maybe next time you listen. <laughs> maybe you want to listen to investors. Yes, maybe you build prediction market. Yes, and you obey. You obey prediction market. Maybe then we do not feel like punishment. <laughs> so that's how I think investors should feel. Now, I'm going to deal with a potential objection to this, which is that people can't afford to act this way because if you choose wrong, you lose money. Okay, so my answer to this is that you should arrange your portfolio so that you can maximize your mistakes. In other words, you, you don't have to worry about making mistakes because you're going to make a lot, okay? So your, your portfolio should not be, uh, it, it should not be in danger if, if you make mistakes, okay? So what I do, at least as far, as far as my Bitcoin investments go, is I have one main investment and that is, um, the best investment in Bitcoin, the one that's definitely going to succeed, the uh, diversified investment between you know equal amounts on both chains. That's my main investment. And then everything else is really tiny. Okay. So when we're talking about the main investment, I'm, I'm risk averse. Okay. Because uh, I, I want it to succeed. But when we're talking about the other things, then, then I can take on a lot more risk. And if I make a mistake, it's like a learning experience, you know? So the main investment is like my house and then everything else is in my playroom. In my playroom, I'm a lot more playful. And I, I can afford to break a lot of hammers, you know what I'm saying? Because, because I've created a specific tiny section of my portfolio in which I can afford to take on risks. This means that I can play chicken better than anybody. Okay, That's a lot of power and it's a very good strategy. Just think about it. All investors should want to do what I do. It's a great strategy. Okay, And if they did, that would be a lot more leverage. Okay, So there would be a lot more disruptive things happening if you weren't listening to the investors, okay? So Bitcoin Cash was good, okay? But I want something better, okay? It's not good enough. Make me something better. I want to be able to do this. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. What do we have now? Let's dig through the rubble. Whoa. Oh, yes. <laughs> what is this? It is at back. Yes, we like at back. Yes, <laughs> he is very good. Very good. We put at back over here. Yes, <laughs> very good. Very good. Oh, now. Oh, what? <laughs> oh. What is this? This is Nick Zabo. Yes, <laughs> we like Nick Zabo. He is very good. Very good. Yes, <laughs> we put Nick Zabo over. Yes, <laughs> very good. 
Oh, now. Oh, and who is this? Oh, it is Paul Stortz. Yes, we like Paul Stortz. He wants to listen to investors. Yes, we put him here in the center. Yes. <laughs> Paul Stortz is my new friend. I'm going to do my next episode on him. Now. What next? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is a Vitalik Buterin. <laughs> we put him over here, far away. Yes, that is good. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, there you go. Now, in real life, I don't think of people as a uh, Lego man that I can move around at will, okay? We're, we're really, we are all friends. And these are all people that, you know, I, I am friends with, even if I don't agree with them on everything. But, uh, you, know, you know, the beatings will continue until morale improves. Got it? <laughs>